In November of 2017, 22-year-old Cheyenne Kluss left her home in Downers Grove, Illinois, for Chicago. She stayed at the home of her friend, Brian Biddle, who was 16 years older than her, in the city's Hermosa neighborhood. Another friend, Chad Chanapai, told True Crime Daily that Kluss had met Biddle during a battle with depression after her mother's death. According to Chanapai, Kluss distracted herself from her grief over her mother by partying, and Biddle was happy to facilitate this lifestyle. The pair reportedly drank late into the night and everything seemed fine at first. A day and a half into the visit, Chanapai awoke to a barrage of early morning text messages from Kluss. She was begging him to come pick her up. But when he responded 20 minutes after the first text from Kluss came in, he was met by radio silence. Biddle claimed that he woke up to find Kluss missing and that he had no idea where she was. Law enforcement said that Biddle was cooperating with the investigation and that he was not a person of interest in the case, even going as far as to call him a valuable witness. Nine days after Kluss vanished, a 911 hang-up call was made from her phone. The call was traced to the 86-acre Mallard Lake Forest Preserve, where two searches failed to locate Kluss on her phone. Her whereabouts remained a mystery for more than five years until January of 2023, when authorities announced that her remains had been found and identified through dental records. The Cook County Sheriff's Office, the DuPage County Sheriff's Office, and the FBI worked together to confirm the identity of the remains, but they declined to reveal exactly where or when the body was found or any other circumstances surrounding Kluss's death. Cheyenne's sister, Mariah Kluss, asked the public for privacy on the family's behalf and said that she hoped everyone could find solace in knowing that Cheyenne had been respectfully laid to rest. Number 26. Delano Burks 26-year-old Delano Burks vanished while out bar hopping with friends in Houston in November of 2022. Surveillance footage showed him in an apparent state of distress as he stumbled across the street at around 1 in the morning after leaving McIntyre's pub. Delano's mother, Karen Jeffley, said that her son's friends failed to look for him on the night he went missing, but they drove home in Burks' car, leading his family to believe that something sinister might have happened. After watching the security video of her son stumbling outside the bar, Jeffley said that it looked like Burks was rapidly losing control of his legs, stating, in her own words, it did not look like he was going to make it very far two weeks later. Burks's body was found floating in the Houston Ship Canal nearly 15 miles from where he was last seen alive. An autopsy failed to determine the cause and manner of death. A police spokesperson said that it was possible for a body to travel from the White Oak Bio near the bar Burks was last seen near to the Ship Canal where he was found. But his mother remains convinced that his death was not accidental. Following the inconclusive autopsy, Jeff Lee told Houston Public Media that the toxicology test turned up some substances in her son's body that experts were unable to identify. She felt that the police were too quick to rule Delano's death as accidental and that investigators had failed to follow up on certain leads. While authorities have not conclusively ruled out foul play, they do not suspect that it was a factor in this case. Number 25. Michael Mosley in early June of 2024, 67-year-old British TV host Michael Mosley vanished during a vacation on the Greek island of Simi. He disappeared while walking alone from St. Nicholas Beach to Simi Town, where he and his wife were staying. Four days later, Mosley's body was found in a rocky area above Aegea Marina, just feet from his destination. A coroner concluded that he died the same day he went missing after going for a walk on difficult terrain. Mosley was one of at least five people who died over a several-week period amid a historic weeks-long heat wave throughout the Greek islands, with temperatures hitting as high as 110 degrees Fahrenheit on some days. On the same day Mosley vanished, a 67-year-old Dutch tourist collapsed and died of a heart attack while hiking through the Mylong Gorge on the island of Crete. A few weeks later, a 74-year-old Dutchman was found dead on the island of Samos after his wife reported him missing. He was seen struggling as he walked in the heat shortly before 
his disappearance. A 70-year-old French tourist and a 55-year-old American tourist also vanished and were found dead after they went hiking in the blistering heat. While some of these deaths are still under investigation, no signs of foul play have been reported, suggesting that the victims likely succumbed to the overwhelming heat. Number 24. Long missing hiker is finally found. During the summer of 2023, climbers spotted human remains and hiking equipment on a thawing portion of the Theodol Glacier near the famed Matterhorn in the Swiss Alps. Authorities removed the body and the other items, including a boot and rusting pieces of metal gear, and turned them over to experts for forensic analysis. The remains were identified as a 38-year-old German hiker who had vanished 37 years earlier in September of 1986. Officials did not reveal the name of the man who was reported missing after he failed to return from a hike or the circumstances surrounding his death. Searches that were carried out after the hiker's disappearance had turned up empty-handed, making him one of several long-missing alpinists whose remains have been found in recent years as climate change accelerates glacial melting. Number 23. Autumn McClure Autumn Lane McClure was last seen alive as her boyfriend dropped her off at a mall in Volusia County, Florida in May of 2004. During the early stages of her disappearance, the teen's grandmother received phone calls and letters from McClure stating that she was okay and would return home in a few years when she turned 18. In 2023, nearly 20 years after McClure vanished, a woman named Jessica Freeman began talking to law enforcement about the case. She reportedly admitted that she and her former partner, Brian Christopher Donnelly Jr., were in an intimate relationship with McClure at the time the young woman went missing. McClure had even lived with the couple at their trailer for a period leading up to her disappearance. After being granted immunity, Freeman revealed that she returned home one day to find Donnelly choking McClure in their bathroom. Unable to save McClure, Freeman left the residence for several weeks. When she returned and asked Donnelly about McClure, he allegedly said, Shut up, or the same thing will happen to you. According to Freeman, Donnelly spoke about McClure's murder on multiple occasions over the following year, claiming that he had dismembered her and disposed of her body parts in various locations. He died in 2022, and Freeman began speaking with police the following year. She pointed them toward the location where they found McClure's suspected remains. When the discovery was announced, authorities were still working to confirm that the remains belonged to McClure, but they seemed pretty confident that this was the case, and while Donnelly is no longer alive to face justice, they can hopefully at least bring some closure to the young woman's family. Number 22. Kyle Klinkscales 22-year-old Kyle Klinkscales left his bartending job in LaGrange, Georgia, late one night in January of 1976 and was never seen or heard from again. He had planned to drive to Auburn University in Alabama, where he was a student, but he failed to arrive at the college as planned for decades. Rumors swirled about what might have happened to the young man and his 1974 Pinto runabout, with many people speculating that he was murdered, but having no solid evidence to back up their suspicions. One tipster even gave police a map of a junkyard where he believed Clink Scales' body was buried. Authorities followed up on every lead they received, but found no trace of the college student or his car. A major break in the case finally came in 2021 when law enforcement in Chambers County, Alabama, received a call about a partially submerged car in a creek. The vehicle belonged to Clink Scales, whose skeletal remains were found inside the vehicle along with his wallet and ID. Sadly, the discovery was made less than a year after Clink Scales' mother passed away without ever knowing what had happened to her son. Unfortunately, the medical examiner who performed Clink Scales' autopsy was unable to determine a cause and manner of death. It's also unclear how the car ended up in the creek. Over the years, several of the investigators involved in the case have suspected foul play, but it's impossible to say whether Clink Scales drove into the creek by accident or if someone perhaps killed him and pushed the vehicle into the water. 
The case was finally closed in 2024, 47 years after Kling Scales went missing, with many of the burning answers surrounding his demise going unanswered. And unless someone comes forward with promising new information, the case will remain closed. Number 21. Anastasia Hamilton 25-year-old Anastasia Hamilton was reported missing in Cleveland, Ohio, late May of 2021. The last known sighting of her was captured on video late at night by a parking garage camera, which showed her walking alongside a man under what authorities described as suspicious circumstances. Hamilton's mother, Melissa Romanello, told News 5 Cleveland that her daughter was an employee at the building where her car was parked. The vehicle was still parked inside the garage after the young woman vanished. Roughly three hours after Hamilton appeared on the security footage, several of her friends received text messages from her stating that her head was pounding, that she didn't feel well and that she wanted to go home. She then went silent and was never heard from again. Acting on a tip, four days after Hamilton disappeared, police found her body on a sofa inside an abandoned house in the city's Slavic village neighborhood. She was covered in lacerations and abrasions to her head and torso, but the Cuyahoga County Medical Examiner ruled her death as an accidental overdose. There were multiple drugs in Hamilton's system when she died, including fentanyl and gabapentin. According to court documents, Hamilton had struggled with addiction in the past. She had been sober for eight months at the time of her death. Despite the medical examiner's ruling that she passed away under accidental circumstances, prosecutors blamed her death on 33-year-old Kenneth Banville, who has an extensive criminal record dating back to 2009. Several witnesses told police that they were aware of previous drug sales between Banville and Hamilton. In 2023, Banville pleaded guilty to multiple crimes, including involuntary manslaughter, corrupting another with drugs, offenses against a human course and tampering with evidence. He was sentenced to 30 to 35 and a half years in prison. Number 20. Marissa Grimes 26-year-old Marissa Grimes was reported missing in Arlington, Texas in February of 2022. Her disappearance came about a month after she was the victim in a domestic violence case in Fort Worth at the hands of 24-year-old Valerian W. Austin, a convicted felon with a lengthy criminal history. During the domestic incident, Austin reportedly held Grimes against her will at his home for several days, during which time he threatened her repeatedly at gunpoint. He posted bond and was released from jail on an ankle monitoring bracelet. The judge overseeing the case also issued an order of protection, banning him from having any contact with Grimes. Witnesses would later tell police that Austin blamed Grimes for his arrest, but he insisted to investigators that he had nothing to do with the young woman's disappearance. A few weeks after Grimes vanished, a U-Haul she had recently rented was found abandoned roughly a mile from Austin's home in Fort Worth. The next day, police found her body in a crawl space beneath the residence. Her death was ruled a homicide by blunt force trauma. Shortly before the discovery of Grimes' body, a witness told police that they had seen blood inside Austin's home. When the person asked Austin about it, he reportedly said that the blood was from a man he had tortured for fun and claimed to be a member of the Russian Mafia. Austin was charged with capital murder and unlawful restraint. He remains in custody at the Tarrant County Jail on a $500,000 bond pending the outcome of the case. Number 19. Danielle Moss 31-year-old Danielle Moss was last seen alive at a family gathering in Washington, D.C. in April of 2023, knowing that she would never deliberately abandon her son. Moss's family members and friends were especially concerned for her well-being. The child's father, Andre Hudson, told NBC Washington that he became worried when he sent Moss some photos from a trip he was on with their son and she didn't reply. Hudson became even more fearful when he tried calling Moss so she could speak with their son and failed to answer the phone. Moss's family reported her missing when she failed to show up at work two days after they last heard from her. Eight weeks later, 
a civilian discovered the missing woman's partially concealed body beneath some power lines in a wooded area of Waldorf, Maryland. Moss's death was ruled a homicide, but the authorities have not revealed how she was killed. The case remains unsolved and law enforcement is hoping that someone comes forward with information that will help them bring Moss's killer to justice. Shortly after she vanished, her family said that she had been hanging out with some questionable people. Moss's stepmother Gloria told NBC Washington that she had spoken with a man Danielle had recently been involved with and that she felt the man knew more than he was admitting to. But he has not been named as a person of interest in the case which remains shrouded in mystery. Number 18. Brianna Ratliff 20-year-old Brianna Ratliff was last seen alive at a gas station in Coshocton, Ohio in April of 2021. Three days later, her murdered body was found inside an abandoned home by members of a search party. Investigators identified Ratliff's friend, 19-year-old Blake A. Gruel as the last person the young woman was seen with. Gruel claimed that they ate at a fast food restaurant together, bought candy at the gas station and went to a local park where they parted ways. It wasn't long before detectives narrowed their sights on Gruel as the accused killer based on surveillance footage from the neighborhood where Ratliff's body was found. After initially insisting that he had no involvement in Ratliff's disappearance or death, Gruel came clean during a second round of questioning in a chilling confession. He told police that he took Ratliff into the abandoned, garbage-filled house and told her to look at something. Gruel smashed a bottle against the back of her head, then choked her until she blacked out. He then used a broken piece of glass to repeatedly slash Ratliff's face and throat. Prosecutors accused Gruel of planning Ratliff's murder weeks ahead of time and using his friendship with the victim to groom her and lure her to her death. According to court documents, Gruel could have stopped and changed his mind about killing Ratliff several times throughout the attack that claimed her life, but he kept going and in early 2022 he was convicted of murder. The judge sentenced him to life without parole, ensuring that he'll remain behind bars until his dying day. Number 17. Adriana Saucedo 27-year-old Adriana Saucedo was reported missing in Portage, Indiana in November of 2019 after she failed to show up at her job. Later that evening, she was found dead with gunshot wounds inside an abandoned elementary school in nearby Gary. According to investigators, Saucedo had made plans to buy a small amount of marijuana from a teenager she had met on Facebook. The young man and two other teens picked her up from her home and robbed her at gunpoint inside the vehicle. They later claimed that they didn't plan to shoot Saucedo, but the crime nevertheless ended in deadly gunfire just blocks away from the woman's home. Identified by police as Sean Thompson, Jonathan Brown and Roderick Silas, the thieves stole $140 in cash that Saucedo had on her at the time and dumped her body inside the school. They split the money and went to several fast food restaurants but were soon identified as the culprits and arrested on suspicion of murder. Thompson eventually confessed to shooting Saucedo with a stolen gun while they sat in the back seat of the car. He tearfully apologized in court, claiming that he was pressured into committing the murder as an impressionable kid, but he received little sympathy from the judge, who sentenced him to 55 years in prison for Saucedo's murder. Thompson is required to serve at least 75% of his sentence, which means he'll be in his 50s before he has any chance of seeing freedom again. Jonathan Brown took a plea deal and was sentenced to 24 years behind bars. Roderick Silas agreed to testify against his co-conspirators in exchange for leniency and is serving time on a robbery conviction with an earliest possible release date of 2034. Number 16. Jamila Smith In December of 2023, 911 dispatchers in Aiken County, South Carolina, received an emergency call from 30-year-old Jamila Smith, who said that her ex had broken into her house and was chasing her. She could be heard screaming before a man in the background told her to get into his car so he could drive her to the emergency room. Smith accused the man of hitting her with his car, 
while he claimed that Smith had jumped in front of the vehicle. The terrified woman told the man not to touch her and begged him not to hurt her. She sounded like she was struggling to breathe, and the car engine could be heard revving in the background. Investigators identified the man involved in the incident as 34-year-old Daniel Gabriel Harmon. They seized his car and found blood in the trunk and on the spare tire, but Smith remained missing. Despite the absence of a body, prosecutors decided to move forward with a murder case against Harmon. In the meantime, the investigation continued. In April of 2024, Harmon's cousin, Brian Alexander Hampton Jr., turned himself in to law enforcement on an accessory charge. A third suspect, Clyde Henley II, also faces an accessory charge. The following month, authorities announced that Smith's body had been found. A spokesperson declined to go into detail about where and how the remains were discovered, but revealed that Smith had been shot in the head. According to records, Harmon remains held without bond at the Aiken County Jail on kidnapping and murder charges, along with separate drug trafficking charges. The outcome of the case remains to be seen. Number 15. Manjaya Mani Staran and Fanta Shayavong. 34-year-old Manjai Mani Staran was reported missing to police in St. Paul, Minnesota in May of 2023. Her concerned father told investigators that she struggled with addiction and mental health issues and that she had failed to check into a rehab facility as planned. Staran's dad also explained that his daughter seemed paranoid and scared when he last spoke with her about two weeks earlier. The father of Starin's child also expressed a concern to law enforcement, explaining that they usually talked on a regular basis due to being co-parents, but that Starin had fallen completely out of touch. During a recent conversation, Starin had told her child father that someone had stolen her wallet and used her food stamp card. She never reported the theft to the police before falling off the radar. The investigation led police to identify Starin's boyfriend, 40-year-old Joseph Jorgensen, as the prime suspect in her disappearance. Starin had told at least one person about past abuse, including one incident where Jorgensen wrapped a rope around her neck and the neighbor recalled seeing her with a black eye and other injuries. When the neighbor offered to call the police, Starin advised them not to, stating that it would only worsen the situation. Surveillance footage from around the time of Starin's disappearance showed Jorgensen shoving her back into her apartment after she tried to run away. She was never seen exiting the building, but the camera captured video of Jorgensen coming and going repeatedly with duffel bags and luggage. During a search of Starin's apartment a few weeks after she was reported missing, investigators found disturbing signs of a violent encounter including broken items and a large amount of blood that someone had tried to clean up. Meanwhile, the unauthorized food stamp transactions were traced to Jorgensen. The investigation eventually led to a search of a storage unit that had been rented out in Jorgensen's roommate's name. Inside, police found Starin's dismembered remains. Jorgensen was arrested on suspicion of murder following a tense standoff with law enforcement. He has since been connected with the two-year-old disappearance of 34-year-old Fanta Shayavong, who also struggled with drug addiction. Shayavong was last seen with Jorgensen prior to her disappearance in 2021. Her remains were found in a separate storage unit shortly after the discovery of Starin's body. It's unclear whether Jorgensen will face charges for her death. In the meantime, the case against him for Starin's murder appears to be ongoing. Number 14. Maureen Gitau 24-year-old Maureen Gitau was last seen leaving a family gathering in London in December of 2022. She was reported missing five days later. Investigators traced her last movements to the apartment of her friend and co-worker, 55-year-old Mark Moody. The two were reportedly close, but something went terribly wrong during that last visit, according to prosecutors, who accused Moody of murdering Gitau and throwing her body in the trash. After killing Gitau, Moody reportedly placed her body in a large communal rubbish bin inside the building's basement. He covered the young woman's remains with garbage, which was soon picked up by the garbage collector and incinerated at a waste facility. By the time Gitau was reported missing, 
It's likely that her body had already been burned. Her cell phone was also never found, leading police to believe that it went into the garbage with Gital's body. Dave denied murdering Gital, but he was found guilty by a jury and is serving life with a minimum of 20 years before he'll be eligible for parole. Phone records show that Davey and Gital interacted daily for a period of time but had fallen largely out of touch until the night of the murder. The motive and circumstances surrounding the horrific crime remain unclear. Number 13. Trisha Todd When 30-year-old nurse Air Force veteran and single mother Trisha Todd failed to pick her toddler up from a babysitter in Hope Sound, Florida one day in April of 2016. Her family immediately knew something was wrong. Todd would have never voluntarily abandoned her child, prompting her loved ones to report her missing. Based on the evidence, investigators identified Todd's ex-husband, Stephen Williams, as the prime suspect in her disappearance. They believed that Todd had been murdered even though her body had not been found, but Williams denied any wrongdoing. Todd and Williams had separated in 2015 after nearly a decade of marriage due to Williams's repeated infidelity. Their divorce had been finalized shortly before Todd vanished and Williams just happened to be in town from North Carolina when his ex-wife disappeared. He claimed he was in Florida to visit the daughter he shared with Todd and that he left the child with the babysitter when Todd failed to come and pick her up before his return to North Carolina as the evidence continued to stack up against Williams. Investigators confronted him for a second time hoping he would come clean about his role in Todd's disappearance. He claimed that he had shoved Todd during an argument causing her to fall and hit her head. Fearing that he would be accused of killing her on purpose, he panicked and hid her body. After being pressured on multiple occasions to reveal the location of Todd's remains, Williams agreed to lead law enforcement to the site in exchange for a 35-year prison sentence for second-degree murder. He took police to the Hungry Land Wildlife Preserve, where he had buried Todd's dismembered remains in a large plastic bin filled with acid. Many remain doubtful that Todd's death was accidental like Williams claimed, and the 35-year sentence doesn't exactly fit the definition of justice that her loved ones had in mind. But the authorities were determined to find Todd's remains so she could be properly laid to rest, giving them no choice but to make a deal with the devil. Number 12. Brandy Wells After putting her education on hold to focus on her marriage, 23-year-old Brandy Wells decided to pursue a divorce and return to college. In August of 2006, she enrolled in classes at a university in East Texas. Before returning to the classroom, Wells decided to fit in one last night of fun. She stopped at her mother's house in Tyler and got dressed up, then went to a popular nightclub in Longview, but Wells never made it home, and her Pontiac Grand Prix was found abandoned several days later along a rural interstate highway. There were no signs of foul play, but there was also no sign of brandy. Her cell phone was found elsewhere several days later, but her purse and its contents were in the car. There was a gas can in the trunk, which the young woman's family found odd since it wasn't in her custom to be prepared for emergencies. Surveillance footage from the nightclub showed Wells arriving at the venue alone shortly before 11 p.m. and leaving by herself about two hours later. She seemed to be acting normal and didn't appear to be in any distress, although one man later claimed that she had asked him for gas money. The fellow bar patron was ruled out as a person of interest, but it caused investigators to wonder if Wells had asked anyone else for help. Several days after her car was found, police identified a person connected to Wells' cell phone activity and questioned the individual who is reportedly a man from the missing woman's past. And while investigators are unable to rule the man out as a person of interest, there's not enough evidence to charge him in connection with the case. More than 17 years later, the case remains cold. Number 11. Paige Birchfeld When 34-year-old mother of three, Paige Birchfeld left her kids with their nanny at her home in Colorado in 2007 and never returned, Everyone in her life immediately knew something was very wrong. Birchfeld would have never abandoned her children. But her friends and loved ones were also shocked to discover that the seemingly wholesome PTA mom was 
moonlighting as an escort to make ends meet following her recent divorce. Investigators initially narrowed their sights on Birchfield's two ex-husbands, but they found no incriminating evidence against either man, so they put them both on the back burner and shifted their focus to Birchfeld's side profession. The last known person to interact with the missing mom was a man named Lester Ralph Jones. He reached out to Birchfeld to inquire about her services, leading police to suspect that he was the last person to see her alive. Their suspicions grew three days after Birchfeld vanished, when canines identified Jones's scent at the scene of Birchfeld's burning car. Jones denied having any contact with Birchfeld, and without any body or any other concrete evidence linking him to her disappearance, authorities had no option but to let him walk free without charges. Birchfeld's remains were finally discovered by a hiker in 2012, five years after she vanished. Her remains were too decomposed to determine a cause of death, but it was apparent that someone had bound her and that she had met a violent end. Jones was charged with murder but continued to maintain his innocence. In court, his defense attorney pointed the finger at Birchfeld's other clients and reminded the jury that the evidence was purely circumstantial. The first trial ended in a hung jury, even after Jones's ex-wife testified to his violent tendencies and recalled being kidnapped by him years earlier. Finally, in 2016, nine years after Birchfeld's disappearance, Jones was found guilty on all counts, including first-degree murder, second-degree murder, felony murder and kidnapping, he was sentenced to life in prison without parole. Number 10. Michelle McMullen In December 2008, 27-year-old Michelle McMullen dropped her son off with a babysitter in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, claiming that she was heading back to her out-of-state college for fall classes, but she'd never arrived back at school, so her family reported her missing. Not long after that, McMullen's car was found abandoned along a roadside in Maryland with her wallet and keys inside. Her family soon began to fear the worst, especially as more and more time passed without any solid leads. In 2010, McMullen was featured on an episode of the ID Channel series, Disappeared. A viewer recognized her and contacted law enforcement, who found the young woman working at a beauty supply store in Oakland, California, where she had been living under an alias for more than two years since her disappearance. McMullen had staged her disappearance after stealing $20,000 from her employer and using it to pay for her college tuition. She knew she was on the verge of getting caught and that she would likely face criminal charges. In a written confession, she revealed that she had driven her car until it ran out of gas, at which point she simply walked away, leaving her old life behind and figuring out each next step as she went along. To avoid scrutiny over her identity and gain sympathy and help, McMullen convinced people that she had recently escaped an abusive relationship. At one point early on in her journey, someone had recognized her at a hotel in Martinsburg, West Virginia, but she slipped away before the police could catch up with her. She eventually made her way to California by meeting up with a man she connected with online and by making other friends along the way. Luckily for McMullen, her family forgave her. After she got caught, they were happy to have her back home. The friend she had met during her time on the run also spoke highly of her, and while she had no choice but to answer for her crimes, it appears as though she squared away the matter and moved on with her life. Number 9. Royal Scoop Daniel III Based in upscale Breckenridge, Colorado, Royal Scoop Daniel III was a highly regarded real estate lawyer and philanthropist who had a reputation for generosity and giving back to the community. His life seemed to be going well, but that all changed one morning in April 2007 when a co-worker arrived at their shared office to find Daniel's dog, a freshly brewed pot of coffee, a pair of broken sunglasses and a partially eaten bowl of cereal. While Daniel himself was nowhere in sight, Daniel's colleagues reported him missing when he failed to return by afternoon. Investigators quickly discovered that the high-profile attorney wasn't as well off as he seemed. In fact, the 60-something-year-old divorcee and father of eight had defrauded his clients out of more than $700,000. He was up to his eyeballs in debt, including unpaid child support, and his motorcycle and passport were missing from his home, leading police to believe he had gone on the run. 
Authorities issued a warrant for Daniel's arrest and the state of Colorado suspended his law license. Nobody saw or heard from the wanted fugitive for nearly four years until he was caught trying to enter the United States on foot from Mexico. During his time on the run, Daniel had kept a low profile while working as a freelancer. His arrest warrant popped up when he tried returning to the US with his real passport, bringing his flight from justice to an unceremonious end. Daniel received a 12-year prison sentence for his crimes. He apologized in court, but many, if not most of his victims, felt too betrayed to forgive him at the time and were still processing the reality that Daniel was a completely different person than they thought they knew. Number 8. Tara Grinstead 30-year-old high school history teacher and former beauty queen, Tara Grinstead was reported missing in Osceola, Georgia. In October of 2005, she was last seen leaving a local barbecue and returning to her home where she lived alone. Grinstead's car was still in her driveway despite her being nowhere to be found and there were no outward signs of struggle inside her house other than a broken lampshade. Her wallet and keys were missing from the scene. The case eventually went cold and it stayed that way for over a decade until 2017 when a woman named Brooke Sheridan claimed to have information about Grinstead's disappearance and death. Sheridan told police that her boyfriend, Bo Jukes, had helped his former roommate, Ryan Duke, dispose of Grinstead's remains after Ryan Duke murdered her. According to Sheridan, the men took their former teacher's body to a pecan orchard owned by Duke's family where they burned the remains. Bo Dukes confessed to helping Ryan Duke dispose of Grinstead's body and was sentenced to 10 years in prison for his role in the case. Ryan Duke admitted to killing Grinstead when she caught him stealing from her purse and was charged with murder. But he recanted his confession in 2022, claiming it had been coerced and that Bo Dukes was the real killer. Duke was acquitted of murder and found guilty of concealing Grinstead's death. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison with credit for five years already served. To this day, it remains unclear which of the men killed Grinstead, which means that at least one person has gotten away with murder. Number 7. Neo Babson Maximus Among his many skills and talents, 22-year-old college student Charles Allen Jr. was an accomplished online gamer who hoped to someday play professional tennis. He struggled with bipolar but his symptoms were well controlled as long as he took his medication. Allen stopped taking his medication in 2007 while living in an off-campus apartment in New Bedford, Massachusetts and a bout of troubling behavior followed. He legally changed his name to Neo Babson Maximus without warning his family or friends ahead of time and began exhibiting signs of confusion and paranoia. Two months after he stopped taking his medication, Maximus missed the planned lunch with his father without calling to cancel and deactivated his Facebook account without explanation. When his sister called him to ask what was going on, he denied deleting his accounts and claimed that people were after him. His friends and family never heard from him again after that. Several days later, a woman found a man matching Maximus's description inside her house in the middle of the night. He apologized and told the homeowner that he was searching for a friend who he thought lived there before leaping out of a second-story window and disappearing into the darkness. The troubled young man's car was found abandoned on campus with his backpack nearby and his shoes were found in the forest. Believing he might still be alive, investigators scoured homeless shelters, hotels, and other places they thought they might find Maximus. They also investigated previous claims Maximus had made about traveling to Florida or Texas, but found no sign of him having gone to any of these places. There's no foul play suspected in this bizarre case. Even though Maximus has been missing for over 14 years, authorities believe he could still be alive and is perhaps living among a homeless community while continuing to suffer symptoms of his mental illness. Number 6. The Trump Family In August of 2016, Mark and Jacoba Trump abruptly piled into their car and left their berry farm in Victoria, Australia, with their adult children Rihanna, Mitchell and Ella. Everyone left their cell phones, IDs and credit cards behind except 25-year-old Mitchell who snuck his phone into the vehicle when his parents caught him using it 
They made him throw it out the window because they were afraid that they were being tracked. Disturbed by his loved one's paranoid behavior, Mitchell separated from them the next day. He took a train back to the family farm and reported his parents and siblings missing to law enforcement. Shortly thereafter, Mitchell's sister, 22-year-old Ella, arrived at the farm in a stolen truck. In the meantime, police found 29-year-old Rihanna cowering inside a utility vehicle that didn't belong to her in a catatonic state. She was taken to a hospital for a psychiatric examination. Five days after the Trump family disappeared, police spotted their station wagon in Wangaratta. Mark fled the scene but was captured along a nearby roadside and Jacoba was nowhere in sight. She was eventually found hundreds of miles away, wandering in what police described as an agitated state. After the family reunited, Mark publicly apologized for the chaos that the family had caused, not to mention the drain on public resources resulting from the days-long search, but he failed to explain what triggered the Trump's strange behavior and it appears as though the family resumed life as normal after stolen vehicle charges against Ella and Rihanna were dropped under mental health laws. Detectives learned that Mark and Jacoba had become increasingly delusional in the days leading up to their sudden departure. They were convinced that someone was out to kill them, and their daughters also started acting unusual. Based on Mitchell's attempt to bring his cell phone along and his decision to report the situation to law enforcement, it seems as though he was the only family member who wasn't overtaken by the bizarre case of collective paranoia. Drugs, money issues, and various other causes were ruled out, leading experts to conclude that the Trumps experienced a rare phenomenon of collective delusions known as foi adieu. It tends to happen to isolated peers or small groups of people and typically starts when a psychotic person imposes their delusions on others. Luckily, the family recovered from whatever went wrong in their minds and have stayed out of the news ever since. Number 5. The Springfield 3 47-year-old Cheryl Levitt, her 19-year-old daughter Suzanne Streeter and Streeter's best friend, 18-year-old Stacy McCall, were reported missing from Levitt's Springfield, Missouri home in June of 1992. Their cars, purses, and other personal belongings were all left behind, including money, ruling out the likelihood of a robbery and leading investigators to suspect that the women had been taken against their will despite the lack of any signs of a struggle. Streeter and McCall had just graduated from high school at the time of their disappearance. They were last seen leaving a graduating party at around 2 o'clock in the morning with plans to meet with friends at a water park just hours later. When the teens failed to show up as planned, one of their friends visited the home and discovered them missing along with Levitt. The only evidence of anything being out of place was a shattered porch light covering which the friend swept up without realizing that she might be destroying evidence. While inside the home, the friend answered a phone call from a man who made disturbing and predatory comments. There was also a suspicious message on Levitt's answering machine which automatically erased after it was played and the mysterious caller was never identified. Later that year, a man contacted America's Most Wanted, claiming to have information pertinent to the case. But the conversation got disconnected and the man never called back despite the authorities' public pleas for him to do so. Suzanne Streeter's former boyfriend, Dustin Reckler, fell under suspicion based on the theory that he wanted to silence Streeter after she gave police a statement about his role in the break-in of a mausoleum. He had stolen gold filings off the skull of a human corpse, which certainly makes him seem like a creepy individual and he was reportedly near Levitt's home on the night of the women's disappearance. But he was never charged in connection with the case. Levitt and Streeter were declared legally dead in 1997, but all three women are still considered missing. That same year, convicted kidnapper and killer Robert Craig Cox claimed to know that the women had been murdered and buried and that their bodies would never be found, but he refused to share additional details and it remains unclear whether he truly knew information about the case or if he was possibly involved. Police have followed up on every possible lead but have gotten no closer to answers regarding the Springfield 3's whereabouts or fate. A $43,000 reward remains in effect for information leading to the arrest and prosecution of a suspect. Number 4. Michelle Ann Harris 
Almost everyone in America knows of September the 11th, 2001 as the infamous day of the terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center towers in New York City. As complete chaos played out in the Big Apple that day, a 35-year-old woman named Michelle Ann Harris vanished from her home a few hours upstate in the rural town of Smithborough at the time of her disappearance. Michelle was estranged from her husband Cal, but they were still living together with their four kids. She went out for drinks with a pair of co-workers after finishing her shift as a waitress, then left to go see her boyfriend at around 11 p.m. The next morning, Michelle's car was found abandoned near the home she shared with Cal. At the time, a lot of members of law enforcement were being sent downstate to work at Ground Zero, which may have hampered the investigation into the woman's disappearance, but detectives were quick to narrow their suspicions on Cal given the contentious nature of the couple's relationship at the time. And while Michelle's body was never found and the evidence was largely circumstantial, prosecutors decided to move forward with a murder case against Cal. In an extremely rare series of court proceedings, Cal was tried four times for his wife's death. His initial indictment was dismissed in 2006 and the case first went to trial in May of 2007. The jury found Cal guilty the following month, but the verdict was overturned due to the discovery of new eyewitness evidence from someone claiming that they saw Michelle with a man in his 20s shortly before she vanished. Cal was found guilty of killing Michelle for a second time following a retrial in 2009. He was sentenced to 25 years to life in prison, but he continued to fight for his innocence. The case was overturned again leading to a third trial which ended in a hung jury. Harris was found not guilty following a bench trial in 2016, but he faced further legal problems including stalking and harassment charges for allegedly spying on a member of law enforcement who was involved in his case. Many people continue to believe that Cal killed Michelle, but he remains a free man and the location of her body is a mystery to this day. Number 3. Kelsey Berreth 29-year-old single mother and flight instructor Kelsey Berreth was reported missing in Cripple Creek, Colorado, December of 2018 by her mother, who had been trying unsuccessfully to reach her for days. She was last seen alive at a grocery store about 11 days earlier on Thanksgiving Day. Suspicion quickly fell on the young woman's fiancé and the father of her young child, 33-year-old Patrick Frazee. Based on the mounting evidence, detectives theorized that Frazee killed Berreth at her home. Several weeks after Berreth was reported missing, authorities charged Frazee with her murder along with solicitation of murder. As it turned out, Frazee was cheating on Berreth with a 32-year-old nurse from Idaho named Crystal Jean Lee Kenny, who told investigators that Frazee had pressured her to kill Berreth for him. Kenny refused to commit the murder, but she admitted that she helped Frazee cover up the crime scene as part of a plea deal, she admitted to tampering with evidence and agreed to testify against Frazee in exchange for leniency. During the murder trial, Kenny testified to the disturbing details of the murder that Frazee had relayed to her. She said that Frazee had blindfolded Berith under the guise of playing a game that involved guessing the scents of various candles. During the game, Frazee struck Berith in the head with a baseball bat then bludgeoned her to death. Berith's last words to Frazee were, please stop. In addition to helping Frazee clean a large amount of blood in Berreth's apartment, Kenny rode with him to his ranch where he burned the victim's remains. Frazee maintained his innocence throughout the trial but was found guilty of murder and seven other charges despite Berreth's body having never been found. The judge sentenced him to life without parole plus 156 years. Today's topic was requested by Hayes071 and none of your business, 6045. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Lars Mittank In July of 2014, a 28-year-old German man named Lars Mittank traveled from Berlin to Bulgaria with some friends for a guy's holiday. The trip went fine until Mittank got into a bar fight that left him with an ear injury requiring him to stay behind in Bulgaria for a few extra days after his friends flew back to Germany. Before going to the airport to catch his flight back home, Mittank called his mother from a hotel near the airport where he was staying. He said he feared for his life and that someone was following him. 
and asked his mother to cancel his bank cards on the day of his scheduled departure. Mitank arrived at the airport on schedule and met with a doctor who was tasked with medically clearing him to fly. During the appointment, the young man exhibited symptoms of extreme paranoia. He eventually jumped to his feet, said, I don't want to die here, I have to get out of here, and fled the room, leaving behind his luggage, wallet, ID, and cell phone. Mitang was never seen again. Surveillance footage of him fleeing the airport went viral, and the case quickly became known as the most famous disappearance on YouTube. The video garnered tens of millions of views, yet nobody provided law enforcement with any viable leads into Mitang's fate or whereabouts. New hope was brought to the case in 2020, when photos of a homeless man bearing an uncanny resemblance to Mitank were captured in Dusseldorf. The photos circulated rapidly on social media, but the man was never identified, leaving the case unsolved to this day. After number one for your daily dose of true crime cases, we have prepared thrilling stories of people's cunning gone wrong, which you won't want to miss. Remember, sometimes cunning can lead to big trouble. Number 1. April Beth Pitzer 30-year-old mother of two, April Beth Pitzer, moved from Arkansas to the town of Newbury Springs, California, in 2004, after acting as an informant in a federal drug case. Her marriage was failing, she had struggled with addiction, and she was looking for a fresh start. After arriving in Newbury Springs, Pitzer worked briefly as a waitress at a local cafe. When she talked to her family, she made it seem like everything was fine, but in reality, she was homeless and living in and out of shelters. She had also stopped taking her medication for bipolar disorder. Amid her efforts to get on her feet, Pitsa took a job as a living caretaker for an eccentric man named Chuck Hollister, but things didn't get much better, and in late June of 2004, she called her mother and said she was moving back to Arkansas. Pitsa never made it back home and was reported missing the following month. When questioned by detectives, Hollister claimed he dropped the missing woman off at the bus station and that it was the last he ever saw of her. It's unclear whether she ever boarded a bus back to Arkansas. Several of Pitzer's belongings were found in a mine shaft the following year, including a bloody mattress. The items were worn by the elements, however, and unfortunately offered no valuable DNA evidence. Authorities painstakingly scoured various mine shafts throughout the region in an effort to find Pizza, but they had no luck. Pizza's mother has expressed suspicions that someone in the drug trade murdered her daughter, given her previous role as a drug informant, but the case remains unsolved to this day, making the prospect of finding answers seem increasingly hopeless with each passing year. On New Year's Eve 2014, father of three, Reginald Jones, went to a garage on the south side of Chicago, where he'd arranged to meet a man who wanted to buy some tires from him. Upon his arrival, however, 33-year-old Jones was met by a masked gunman who shot him nine times, killing him on the spot, although the case remained unsolved for the next few years. Cook County authorities eventually made headway in their investigation, as reported by the Chicago Sun-Times in December of 2017. Investigators zeroed in on 26-year-old Brianna Smith, whose jailed boyfriend Jones had been slated to testify against prior to his slay. County prosecutors revealed that a year and a half before the shooting, Jones had gotten into a contentious argument with Smith's boyfriend, who ended up firing a gun at him, striking him in the arm. The boyfriend was consequently arrested on an attempted murder charge, and Jones was preparing to appear in court in support of the prosecution's case. Smith allegedly orchestrated the hit on Jones in order to protect her boyfriend. As of the most recent updates, the gunman was still at large, but Smith herself had been taken into custody and held without bond on a charge of first-degree murder. Number 6. Stoney Williams In the early hours of December the 9th of 2022, a woman was gunned down inside the car dealership where she worked in Snellville, Georgia. According to a press release by the Gwinnett County Police Department, officers were called to the business for a report of shots fired. Upon arrival, they found 34-year-old Courtney Owens dead from an apparent gunshot wound 
An eyewitness reported seeing a masked man armed with a gun fleeing the scene on foot. After about a month of analyzing crime scene evidence and canvassing the nearby area for security footage, investigators finally identified a suspect in the case. 23-year-old Wesley Vickers, the alleged gunman, was taken into custody on charges of felony murder, malice murder, and aggravated assault. Shortly after Vickers' capture, authorities announced that a second suspect, 41-year-old Stoney Williams, had been identified. While Vickers was described as the individual who carried out the shooting, it was Williams who allegedly arranged it. Although a motive for the killing wasn't initially revealed, it later emerged that the victim was Williams' ex-girlfriend and business partner. The man solicited the services of Vickers, whom he offered $20,000 and instructed to make the hit look like a robbery. Prior to the shooting at the car dealership, Williams reportedly plotted to have Vickers shoot up the home in Fairburn, where Owens had been staying with a friend, thereby sending a message to his ex. Vickers, meanwhile, allegedly planned to take out Williams as well in order to steal an additional $15,000 from him, but the latter never showed up on the day of the incident. In April of 2023, it was reported that Williams had been located and arrested in Texas. He was subsequently slated to face extradition back to Georgia to stand trial for murder. Number 5. Josiah Garcia A Tennessee Air National Guardsman came under FBI scrutiny after responding to a listing for a murder for hire on a parody website called rentahintman.com in early 2023. 21-year-old Josiah Garcia, who'd been employed by the Air National Guard for about two years, came across the phony website in February while searching for mercenary jobs online. He was reportedly in dire need of money to support his family and thus submitted an application for a hitman position. On his resume, Garcia described himself as an expert marksman whose military nickname was Reaper. He also allegedly got in contact with the site administrator for rentahitman.com, expressing his urgent desire for work. Garcia's enthusiastic application prompted the involvement of an undercover FBI agent who subsequently posed as an interested party and arranged to meet to purportedly discuss a job. During their meeting at a park in Hendersonville, Tennessee in April, Garcia told the agent he wanted to do something exciting and that he'd previously looked into civilian law enforcement but decided it wasn't for him. The undercover agent provided a suspect with photographs of the fake target as well as a $2,500 down payment. By that time, authorities had gathered enough to obtain a warrant for Garcia's arrest in connection with the scheme. He consequently faced the charge of use of interstate facilities in the commission of murder for hire. As of November of 2022, rentahitman.com had aided in the arrest of at least 30 individuals, according to the site's founder. Number 4. Matthew Muller On March the 23rd of 2015, California woman Denise Huskins and her boyfriend, Aaron Quinn were accosted in the middle of the night at her Viejo residence. The couple were drugged, bound and blindfolded by a stranger in a wetsuit, after which Huskins was abducted and held for ransom. Shortly before the demanded ransom was due, however, the woman resurfaced, prompting Viejo police to theorize that the entire ordeal had been a hoax, orchestrated by Huskins and Quinn for money. In the months that followed, federal investigators began looking into the matter, leading to the discovery that the victims had not in fact been lying. A Harvard Law graduate and former United States Marine by the name of Matthew Muller was charged in connection with the home invasion and abduction scheme. At the time he was identified, Muller was already in police custody for a second home invasion. He'd been disbarred earlier that year after failing to pay annual dues and not cooperating with the bar's resulting investigation. It went on to be revealed that after kidnapping Huskins, Muller took her to a cabin on Lake Tahoe where he forced her to perform intimate acts on camera. He was initially sentenced to 40 years in prison on a federal kidnapping charge in 2017, but subsequently returned to court to face judgment for the repeated abuse to which he'd subjected Huskins. He pleaded no contest to the additional charges for which he was given an additional 31-year prison sentence in March of 2022. Number 3. Ion Cook Kosayek in March of 2023, the FBI announced the arrest of a man from Augusta, Maine, who was accused of participating in a murder-for-hire plot. The suspect, 41-year-old Hyon Cook Korsayek, first garnered the attention of law enforcement after expressing his desire to kill someone for money. Communications detailing his nefarious impulse were intercepted by the Bureau of Prisons in January of 2023, with the authorities discreetly on his tail 
Kosayek met with an individual on multiple occasions in both New York and Boston who was interested in having the main resident carry out a hit on a businessman supposedly staying at a Manhattan hotel. Kosayek agreed to commit the assassination for the price of $50,000 and also expressed the willingness to travel over 300 miles to fulfill the murderous contract. In one meeting with his handler, Kosayek reportedly described how he planned to commit the murder, detailing his intention to use the arsenal of weapons he had in his possession. The prospective hitman requested silences for the guns as well as a latex mask to circumvent facial recognition software. Following the shooting, Kosayek also planned to use a fake police uniform to evade law enforcement detection. As he was making final preparations, however, Kosayek was ambushed by FBI agents in Tarrytown, New York. The man was reportedly in possession of four guns, a bulletproof vest, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, a latex mask, rifle scopes, high-capacity magazines, and latex gloves. As it would subsequently emerge, Corsaic had unwittingly devised a murder plot with an undercover FBI agent who'd given him a fictitious target. He was held in custody on charges of murder for hire and possession of a firearm following a felony conviction. The latter count stemmed from a 2017 conviction for theft from a licensed firearms dealer. The maximum potential sentence for Kosayek's two criminal counts was reported as 10 to 15 years in prison, respectively. Number 2. John William Kirby Kelly A former student at Old Dominion University in Norfolk, Virginia, was arrested in connection with a swatting scheme he facilitated in chat rooms on the dark web. According to the FBI, 19-year-old John William Kirby Kelly conspired with John Cameron Denton, the former leader of the extremist group known as the Atom Waffen Division, to target various individuals with swatting calls in which false reports of imminent violence are made to the authorities in order to elicit a prodigious law enforcement response and harass unsuspecting targets. The individuals accused of taking part in Kelly's conspiracy consisted mainly of white supremacists who swatted people primarily out of racial animus. During one such incident, Kelly reportedly asked his co-schemers to swat his alma mater. On November the 29th of 2018, a bomb threat was made, prompting Old Dominion University officials to issue a shelter-in-place order. Law enforcement officers subsequently searched and cleared every building on campus before the order was finally lifted. A press release by the United States Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Virginia revealed that upwards of 134 fake calls were placed by participants in Kelly's swatting scheme, some of which targeted journalists, a historic Virginia church, an Islamic center in Arlington, Texas, and a former U.S. cabinet member. The young man was eventually arrested and held in the custody of the Alexandria Sheriff's Office. In March of 2021, having pleaded guilty to his charges, Kelly was sentenced to 33 months in prison. Number 1. Christopher Pope and Emma Hunt Alabama man Christopher Pope filled a prescription for oxycodone acetaminophen at a Kroger pharmacy in Auburn on April the 1st of 2022. The script bore the signature of a Dr. Sunil Sharma, but medical records indicated that Pope had never been a patient of Dr. Sharma's prompting an investigation by local authorities. Pope, along with Emma Hunt, operated the popular East Alabama food truck drive-by tacos, which was established back in 2018. Auburn police pulled the food truck over in Lee County and while no drugs were found in either Pope's or Hunt's possession, the pair were arrested in connection with their alleged prescription drug scheme, which reportedly dated back to as early as January of 2020. On multiple occasions, the drive-by tacos co-owners were accused of unlawfully filling prescriptions for painkillers at various pharmacies and drugstores in Auburn and Opelika. Pope and Hunt categorically denied allegations that they were running an illicit drug scheme and were bonded out of jail while awaiting appearances in court. Thanks for watching. If you could pick any death in history that has conspiracy theories surrounding it about what truly happened, which one would you choose to learn the whole truth about and why? Let us know in the comment section below.